Hey everyone! Thank you for tuning in. Today we're making baguettes at home. Before we get started, I do want to remind you that this is a two-day process. To start off, we're going to make our poolish, which is two cups of bread flour. Next, you're going to add four ounces of your starter or two teaspoons of active dry yeast. Now we're going to add one cup of warm water and make sure everything is mixed well and there are no dry flour bits. So our poolish is just about done and we are going to rest this for 12 hours covered in a warm area. After resting the poolish overnight, we are now able to start the dough. Of the one and a half cups of water, we're going to use one and a quarter cups of the warm water first, and we're going to mix very well. Make sure that everything is incorporated and it's more of a liquid mass rather than a sticky one. We're going to add one teaspoon of active yeast. Even if you used leaven before during your poolish, or you use the commercial yeast, definitely still put the one teaspoon of yeast just to help with the rising process. Add in one teaspoon of salt and then a mix of three cups of bread flour and three cups of all-purpose flour. At this point you can either use your dough whisk or your hand to mix this dough. I like to use my KitchenAid with the dough hook attachment. It's a lot easier and saves a lot of time. We're going to pulse this a few times on low, and then we're going to add water in slowly. I like to do it in little increments, just so that it's enough to form the dough. You don't wanna to add too much, otherwise you're going to have to put more flour in to build a perfect dough consistency. Just keep a lookout. We're gonna turn this up a notch and bring up the speed a little bit. After scraping down the dough, I noticed it needed a little bit more water just so that the dough really comes together and it's more tacky. We want to keep kneading this on the speed level 4 just until the dough is off the sides of the walls. Now it's looking a lot better and we're going to stop it. Now we're going to move over to my favorite part, which is the kneading process. We're going to start off with dusting with a little bit of flour. You don't want to add too much as it will play a big part in your dough consistency when you're rolling it out later on. For some that want to know how I knead my dough, I do have an overhead and a side view snapshot. So you can really see what I do when I'm kneading my dough. This is what I normally do for all of my breads. And it's also a great way to relieve any stress that you may have. So you're going to start off with tucking in all of the corners and then really bring it all in. And then at the end, we're going to roll it into a ball and we're going to tuck in the dough by pulling it towards us with the pinkies dragging on the bottom, really tucking that dough in to form a seam. You know your kneading is complete when your dough is smooth and soft to the touch, not sticky anymore. Now we're gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil into the bowl, place it in there, cover it, and we're gonna rest it for one hour. After the hour, you can see that it's doubled in size, which is great, that's what we're looking for. You definitely wanna see that it has risen. I have a problem with deflating my dough sometimes but you don't have to it's okay just scrape it out and we're gonna start dividing the dough evenly so that we can start forming perfect dough balls and then making them into baguette shapes as you notice I ever so slightly dusted the area where I'm going to put my dough 
as well as a small portion of flour at the top right just for later on when I am rolling out my baguettes we are going to dust them and then I also floured my digital scale area so it doesn't really stick so much so we're shaping the dough balls we measure them out and then shape them um, you're going to tuck in the corners just like before when you're kneading them and then we're going to quickly roll them into a ball you don't need to knead them just basically pull all of the corners in and then shape that ball if you don't have enough room you can lightly flour another area space or your cutting board and put the dough balls right on there we're going to lay them all seam side down so we're going to continue dividing them I'm just going to gently flatten with my hands and then tuck all of the corners in flip it over and roll it into a ball you're going to continue this all throughout until you're done with all of that dough See, so I ran out of space and I needed to transfer all of my dough balls onto the cutting board which I had lightly floured. If you do this step ahead of time, you won't have to do it later on like myself, but just wanted to show you guys all of the dough balls and how we form them and just showing you that the seam sides are down. So now I'm going to move them over and then we're going to start shaping our baguettes. Are you ready? To start, we're going to have the seam side up at this point. If it does get a little bit sticky, it's okay. Just dust your fingers with some flour and then just apply a little bit onto the dough, a very, very tiny bit. And then we're going to gently flatten and we're gonna take the top portion of the third and fold it down like an envelope. We're gonna rotate it 180 degrees. And do the same thing so it meets into the middle. Now with my left hand, I'm basically putting an indent into the middle of that section with my thumb and then using my right hand to just bring the dough over it and just seal it again. So I did that twice. I, I did it one side and then I rotated and did it again. As you can see, the seam is pretty much shut. If it's not, it's okay. Just use your fingers to just pinch it a little bit. I'm using one hand in the middle to cup and move it back and forth and then using both hands to really bring the dough out to create a small point at the ends, which is your baguette, and still see that the seam is completely shut. We're gonna dust the bottom of that portion, and when we lay out onto our floured surface, I like to use like a couche or a towel, we're gonna lay it so that the seam side is up. I'm sorry it's not pictured here, but I'm gonna let you guys watch it slowly and zoom in and I won't talk. So here you go. Now that you've watched it the second time, do you think you've got it? I'm gonna speed this up a little bit and let's see what you can do. Okay, so the last few I sped it up quite a bit just so that you can really see it. If you want, you can absolutely rewind it and rewatch it. You're gonna rest this for about 30 minutes covered 
Um, you want to rest this until you, when you stick your finger to touch the dough, it leaves an imprint, but it slowly bounces back. So if it bounces back too quickly, your dough is not ready to be baked. Um, but if it comes up a little bit slower, then it's ready to score, and then we're going to bake it. So my first tray is actually ready to be transferred over onto parchment paper. It took about 45 minutes to rest. So I used a paper bag that's folded up. You can use a pizza peel if you have, but paper bag works just as fine for me. So I'm gonna transfer it over. I'm gonna, I basically roll it over and have the seam side facing down. And before we score, go and preheat your oven. Now you're going to use a really sharp knife and score on a 40 degree angle. You wanna make sure that the tip of the knife really tucks in on that side to cut through and you don't want to pause when you're cutting through the baguette you want to just take one big long slit right through the middle so that it can open up nicely watch again since i'm just about done we're going to move this to our preheated oven i have two baking sheets upside down and i'm going to lay it in there and i'm going to spritz it with a little bit of water to create steam to allow the baguettes to open up when they're baking and rise nicely. So I'm gonna put the next one in, spritz a little water. I do have a cast iron pan in the oven. I'm gonna put hot water right into that empty cast iron pan and close the oven right away. You wanna keep the steam inside. I really hope you enjoyed watching this baguette tutorial. It's taken me some time to really put it together for all of you, but I hope you enjoy it. Please like and subscribe and let me know your comments below. Thank you for watching. Until next time.